We again do thank you that uh, you brought us together this morning to, to worship you. We know that uh, all things are in your hand and that you still give us the freedom to gather. And it is an honor and a privilege to worship you, the God of all creation, the one who, who made everything from nothing. And Father, you see us as such that you would send your Son so that we have a way to communicate even with you and, and ultimately to live with you. And that is a glorious gift. And Father, uh, there are so many things on our minds this morning. And the things that, that are of less importance, Lord, help us to cast them off for a time, to push them to the side so that, that we are fully present, that we are here, that we are ready, that our hearts are ready, our minds our bodies, that we are ready to worship. And Father, may your spirit be felt among us this morning, maybe in a new way, for those that maybe have never felt it, maybe it come upon them. And uh, for us, that, that those of us that have the spirit dwelling within, may, may he enliven us this morning, like he hasn't before. Father, we just call it on you to be present, as we know you are. And Father, there are things that uh, we just lift up to you this morning. There are things that people are dealing with, that many uh, people that we know and love that are going through suffering and trials and uh, such things. Father, we, we lift up those that are uh, on our list in the bulletin. We lift them up by name to you this morning, Father. We lift up Bill Tompkins and Brad Reinhold. We continue to lift up Kurt Winters. David Ryan Hart, Earl Myers, and we probably we continue to lift up a friend of Chris McCloskey, and John Young, and Joel McDowell, and Marvin Crick, and Mike Cooley, and Miles Resch, and Myrna Parlett, and Terry Baby. Father, there are many more that are in our thoughts and prayers that uh, we, we know you know. And Lord, uh, you know all the situations. You know the ones that were mentioned and the ones that, are, uh, that weren't mentioned. And Father, we call on your grace and your healing, your needed, uh, your blessing upon them. And Father, where we can be used by you as your hands and feet to, to reach out, to, to sit with, to talk to any of these people, Father, uh, call upon us, uh, move within us, stir us, stir our hearts towards that, Father, we are to be your hands and feet to those that need. Father, again, we thank you, we thank you for this time, because we know we are only given so much, it is so little in the grand scheme of things, the time we have, and we thank you for what you've given Father, we want to honor that this morning. We want to be fully present. We want to be here. And Father, we come as one body this morning, with one voice, saying the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and free us from our debts. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to him for protection. For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock? God is a strength, and he is a way of the perfect. The Lord is, grace to my rock, may God my salvation be exalted. Let's sing together this morning our first hymn, Praise the Lord, ye heavens, adore him. Number three in our hymn.
read here in, in a few minutes. Anyhow, so it's talking about the armor of God. I, I think you guys talked about it in Sunday school, right? Did you? Last Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I heard somebody say yes. You did. So do you remember all of the parts of the armor of God? It's from Ephesians 6. But I'm not going to read it. Do you remember? There's, there's different parts, there's different sorts of clothing that Paul talks about or uses. It's not that it really shows what he's on, but he talks about certain Arts. Do you remember? Okay, there's a sword, but it's not of salvation. There is a sword. You know what he talks about first? This thing. See? Do you know what this is? I'm not taking it all because I need it. What is it? A belt. Okay, some, some versions don't say belt, but others do. It's a belt of, if something's the opposite of false. I know you know the opposite of false. You know, if you have a question that the answers are false or true, the belt of truth. Okay, you have that, right? The of truth he talks about. And he talks about this breastplate, this thing that goes, covers here of, do you remember that one? That was a little harder. It has, it has a word in it that's kind of the opposite of wrong. Yes, the, the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, and then there's, then there's the, the shield of Remember the shield? Uh, Fresh with an F? No. Faith. The shield of faith. Okay? And then there is the helmet. The helmet of what you call the sword. Yes, the helmet of salvation. Now, you know, is Paul really saying that we need to go put all this armor on and carry a sword? Right. He's just using a, what is called a metaphor, or like trying to give them an idea that we need to be protected, right? With this armor that he talks about. Oh, and I forgot the shoes. Remember? They're sandals or shoes of readiness of the gospel of peace. Remember that one? That's a little harder to remember. But I'm going to talk about that in my sermon. So you'll have to listen, okay? Well, I have papers here for you to go. And you'll, you'll listen to see what each one is kind of talking about, okay? But he says to put on this armor. Why do we need armor? Do you remember? Okay, well, he did this from the schemes of the devil, or the things that the devil tries to do to us. We need this protection, right? So God gives us this protection. It's not a physical, like, armor. It's more spiritual that we have all this protection to help to cover us so that we can't, so when we're in God's word and when we're obeying him and doing his will, that he keeps us from the schemes or these bad things and uh, of the devil, right? So he can't come at us as easy. So that's good, right? That we have an armor from God. So, all right, you guys did pretty good. You remember there was a sword, and you, you, you had to go my belt, but that's okay. We know what it's all. You, know, you think you can remember it now? We have a, what do we have first? Belt. belt of truth. Yes, and then the Breastplate of righteousness. Remember that was a big word. Just means kind of like right, just standing right with God. And then there is the shield, right? Of, and then there's 
shoes. I forget which one, which one doesn't have a <coughs> shoes with readiness of the gospel complete peace, and then there's a helmet of salvation and a sword of. Okay, we talked about that, did we? Ah, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, I might test you again some other time, but that's okay. This is all God's protection that we have to fight, to go against, to help us stand against the devil. All right? All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning for these children. We thank you for uh, all you're doing within them and through them. Father, help them to be a light in their schools. And Lord, we ask that you continue to stir within their hearts move them to you, to seek you, your guidance. And Father, us as parents and as a church, that we continue to raise them by your will, your way, through your word. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I was sick and didn't want to, you know, infest everyone here. So, but then when I asked Dale what was available for us to come to sing again, I asked if the state was available. And he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Oh, great, we'll do that." Totally, I forgot that the first song that we're singing, or that I'm singing as well, is called "The Commission," and it's by a band called Pain. And we're going to their concert tonight. And she was very. It was like, oh, it's so bad. Um, we really like this song, and just um, we want you to listen to the words. It's coming from the perspective of Jesus and what he calls us to do.
chapter 6, starting with verse 14. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all the perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me and opening my mouth boldly, to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Let's pray again again this morning. Father, we thank you again for this time. And now as we come to your word, Father, we ask your grace upon it, uh, that uh, this message be your message, not mine. If there's anything that comes out of my mouth that is incorrect, you correct it. Anything unworthy of your glory, you cast it into the pits of hell. Father, this is all for you and your glory. May it be your words from your words and for us this morning. Prepare our ears, our minds, and our hearts. Father, speak to us however you will and move us into doing your will. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. So if you are familiar with uh, Marvel movies, uh, I'm a little bit of a fan just because I like superhero stuff, but just, I know it's all fake. Um, and then, you know, they've been out for the past few years, there's been quite a few of them. You uh, might know one that's called Iron Man. Uh, he's, a, he's a regular human, he's a regular man that wears a suit of armor to protect himself and fight against the bad guys, the evil that might become. Now there, there's three of these Iron Man movies, he's in more of the movies than that, but there's three that are just focused on him. Um, and he really seems to be just about unbeatable. He's, uh, you know, there's really not much that can come against him that he can't defeat. Um, fairly easily, easily. But there is one scene in the second Iron Man where this, I forget what his name is, but he comes and he kind of, he put, he does some damage to Iron Man. And uh, it, it causes him, to, you know, it causes everyone to kind of see that, hey, this guy is not invincible. Um, and the, the movie has a line in it that I thought was interesting. The man that, that who wears the Iron Man suit was just defending his position to the United States government and no one else had this technology and now this other person comes and, and proves that it is, that someone does. And uh, that nobody, you know, someone can actually beat him. Um, this person doesn't defeat Iron Man, but causes damage, as I said. So there's, there's this uh, point that, that he's trying to make. And after the battle, these two have a conversation. The man that, that, that came after our man is arrested and he's in a, in a room and they have this conversation. And uh, the man that, that fought against him, he said that if you make God bleed, then people will cease to believe in him. I thought that's interesting. It shows weakness. It shows vulnerability. There was weakness exposed in this armor which called doubt. And, and this is what the devil tries to do with Christians. He tries to, to get in and point out weaknesses and cause doubt. He wants to get in and tear down anything that is of God. And bringing doubt and discouragement to believers is what he desires, what he wants to do. So we're continuing our study in Ephesians. And as you know, we're almost done. One more week after today, and then we'll be moving on. Uh, but we're in chapter 6, on the armor of God. And last week, we focused more on the necessity of this armor. 
Um, and this week we're going to look at what the armor is that Paul's talking about uh, a little bit closer. Paul talked earlier in the letter about putting on the new self, taking off the old and putting on this new. And this is done when we are reborn or when a person is reborn in Christ. There, there is a covering that happens making new creations. There is a spiritual armor that is to be worn. So Paul tells these first century Christians to stand. He, he then uses the metaphor of armor that is necessary to be put on. And this armor that Paul talks about in these verses is, it really is unfamiliar to us. We don't wear armor. We don't, even our military doesn't necessarily wear armor. We don't live in the first century uh, under Roman rule. No one in our context really wears this sort of armor. The first century Christians would have, would have been very familiar with this uh, because they were in the midst of the Roman rule, seeing Roman soldiers and, and knowing what they wore. He, he talks about what some translations call a belt, as I said with the kids, children. This would have been worn around the waist to protect the abdomen. Now, the, the NASB, the New American Standard Bible, Said, uh, it says this in 6.14, having girded your loins with truth. Now, don't, don't say it out loud, but by a show of hands, who here knows what that means? Anybody? I mean, it, it's a saying that, that I'm sure has been used at times. Uh, the, the clothing commonly worn in that time and place is a long robe. And that would go all the way down to the ankles. Even, even those in the military would wear these long robes. And to gird up your loins was to take this robe and to fasten it up with a belt or with something that could tie it there. Uh, around the wet waist. And what that did was it freed your legs so that now you could, if you're ready for action, you can run. You can, you can do whatever needs to be done with your legs. And uh, the the truth is to prepare them for action. This belt of truth, now they're ready for action. And then he goes on to the breastplate of righteousness, this, this protection of the vital organs and the, and the body. And this, uh, this is not of human righteousness, this is Christ's righteousness that is protecting the, the vital parts. And his righteousness is the only real righteousness uh, giving full protection. And then he talks about sandals or, or shoes uh, to be put on the, and putting on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And this is a bit confusing in its wording. There, there is to be readiness to go and spread the gospel of peace. The, the shoes, there's to be readiness to go and do this. Now, we're, we're girded and you have your shoes on. In Isaiah uh, 52, 7, says this, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says design your God's brains. Paul seems, Paul seems to be referencing much of Isaiah in this uh, metaphor of the armor. And uh, in, this, in the context of battle, where these messengers, uh, there was messengers that would go and tell how the battle was going. They would go back to the city to where the, the, the uh, soldiers went from and to bring them the message of how the battle was going. Now, there would be lookouts that would be watching to see how these messengers are coming. And uh, many times they would be running. And now they didn't have cell phones, so they couldn't call or, call or text to tell them what's going on. Uh, the messenger actually sometimes would be put to death depending on the message. You know, we have that saying, don't kill the messenger. And we're just the messengers. So they would be put to death depending on how it, they didn't bring good news. And that would, you know, if you think about this, that would certainly change the way the messenger is coming. He's not going to probably be skipping and hopping. He's going to be maybe walking a little bit slower as he approaches the city. And the, the lookouts could read the feet of the messenger. And, 
Uh, Paul also wrote in Romans, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So seeing, you can see this good news coming. And, and the word gospel, we, we know, I'm sure, means good news. They were to be messengers bringing this good news, bringing uh, this good news of salvation, this gospel to, to those around. And I would argue that this is one of the main reasons for all of this protection against the death. And he doesn't want this gospel to go out. And this makes sense uh, to then talk about the shield of faith, the, the shield of protection also. The shield of the Roman soldier that they would have been familiar with was, was huge. It was in many times as the size of the person. And it was oblong. And and they would have been in a, in a group of, in a group setting many times that if you were back from the front, you would hold it above your head. And if, but if you were in the front or the sides, you would hand hold it vertically. So it would cover kind of everyone. And what they had was, many times on these shields, was they had animal skins. And they would dip them in liquid or water. Because what's coming at them are flaming arrows. And this would keep them from catching fire. It would keep, you know, would douse the flame. Now these shields, uh, you know, Paul here uses that and kind of speaks to the devil shooting flaming darts at Christians. He knows exactly where to hit with these flaming darts when he's shooting at Christians. And then he knows that they will leave a lasting mark. He knows what he's doing. And Paul says we are to have, or they are speaking to them at this point, to have this shield of faith. He knows what accusations to bring. And he messes with the mind. And, you know, that's where I think Paul goes with the helmet of salvation. Some commentators will associate this with assurance of salvation. And knowing that your, your salvation is secure. It's a, it's a matter of the mind. And he, Satan, the devil knows what to do. He knows where to go with each of us. The final part that he mentions is the sword of the Spirit. And this is God's Word. And in the context of this letter, many would say that this really directly focuses or points to the gospel message itself. Well, I, it includes all of God's Word, really. Because the gospel is all of God's Word. God's whole message is from Scripture from the beginning to the end of that. Is the gospel. We, we even look to Jesus as an example of battling against the devil, against Satan. He uses scripture. Each time the devil tempted Jesus, scripture was the defense. And we see that in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. God's word is, a, you know, a, I, I again see this as a defensive weapon. It's fighting off the attacks of the devil. Paul tells them uh, that all of this protection is to be enveloped in prayer. Uh, some might see this, this, these next few verses as something separate. It is really tied together with all of this. The armor of God and then prayer. It's not, it's not a new idea. It's not a new focus. It is all of these things are to be enveloped in prayer. He says that praying at all times in the Spirit. Now, this is not praying in tongues. There, there are other scriptures that, that speak to that sort of thing, but that is not what is meant here. This is talking about the Spirit's help in prayer. Praying with assistance from the Spirit. Being in the Spirit in prayer. Uh, communicating with God the Father. As, as Paul again wrote in Romans 8, 26 and 27, he says, The Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So it's praying in the Spirit. Paul calls on them to continually pray and also when this includes intercessory prayer for all the saints, for Christians, all Christians. And there is to be prayer covering all those who are in Christ. And Paul also includes himself in this, and rightfully so. He is one who has been and had been proclaiming the gospel boldly, with, with suffering from it. 
He, he humbly asked for the words to be given to him. And J.I. Packer uh, writes, when Paul talks about being an ambassador, he says Paul considered himself Christ's ambassador. What is an ambassador? He is an authorized representative of a sovereign. He speaks not in his own name, but on the behalf of the ruler whose deputy he is. And his whole duty and responsibility is to interpret the ruler's mind faithfully to those whom he is sent. He knows who he represents. He knows that, his, that he represents Christ, just as he says that all Christians do in his letter to the Corinthians. Second Corinthians 5.20, we are ambassadors for Christ, talking about all Christians. As ambassadors, there's, there's armor to wear for protection. Representing Christ brings about opposition. It will. And Satan, Satan does not want the truth of the gospel to be spread. He doesn't want this. This is, this is against him. He will attack anyone attempting to do just that. And hopefully... Uh, after worship, no one's planning on going out and getting a real suit of armor because that's, like I said, that's not what he's talking about here. This is not literal. It is a metaphor. We we know Paul talk, isn't talking literally here. But if you want to get a suit of armor, that's fine. So if you fall down, and, right, be protected. But not for this case. Um, he is using a very strong metaphor, though, to prove his point, to point this out. And it is interesting that how many will downplay, as I said last week, the, the devil and what he can do in his power. Uh, Paul seems to believe that this threat is pretty serious. Why such important and, and heavy armor is necessary if the devil doesn't have that much power? There needs to be protection covering all the vulnerable areas. And this armor is to be worn. It is to be our covering of protection. And all these are of God, from God. It is, it is our new clothing in Christ. It is the spiritual newness, the spiritual protection. This isn't a protection against other people. And as we saw last week in the previous verses, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is not against other people. And it doesn't matter where we stand politically. Our battle is not against other people. Our battle is against the devil and all of his schemes. And it's not even that we are to be offensive in this fight, but to find our refuge and strength in God and live in his protection. Spreading the gospel. There is nothing within this that points to us standing in our own strength. It is not our own truth, but God's truth that we wear, being ready for action when needed. And we must walk in the truth. And our lives are to be lived out in truth. We are God's people and must be seen acting in truth. It is not, as I said, our righteousness that we dwell in. We, we, but Christ's righteousness that covers our weaknesses, our sin. We are seen as righteous only because of Christ. It is His righteousness. That is our new identity that, that should define us, that does define us. And the gospel of peace is not of us either. Uh, may, our, may our feet, though, be beautiful. That, that's such a weird saying. But may our feet be a beautiful sight to others bringing good news of Jesus Christ to those that need to hear. Attract beautiful, and looking at the feet. And I know it gives a metaphor, but it's bringing, it's the, the action of bringing good news, not bad news. And our presence should bring peace, the peace of God, wherever we travel. And the faith that protects us from the tax, the shield of the devil, the attacks of the devil, it's not us either. Our faith is, is finds its source in God. Our faith is given by God. It is founded upon the promises of God's word. Earlier in Ephesians, we saw this when Paul wrote, for, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not 
of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not uh, the result of works that anyone may boast. And we know that salvation, then, is also not of us. This comes through Christ. This, is, uh, this means that we have the assurance of our salvation, that salvation, through the, the, the promises in God's word as well. We have assurance. Our minds must be dwelling on these promises uh, and not doubt that the devil tries to break. God's word is, is at our fingertips. Each of us has available Bibles uh, that we can read, that we can look at, even on our, our electronic devices. And th this is our weapon. But again, I don't see it as offensive. Now, it, it does offend people <laughs> at times because it's truth. But I see it as a defensive weapon here, fighting against this battle. It, it, it is what destroys the attack of Satan when it comes. It is alive and active, cutting. It cuts through anything that goes against it. It cuts deep. It, it is alive, and it's not, it's not something that we should go out and and, you know, I kind of, when I think of something offensive or using it as an offensive weapon, it's kind of like beating someone under the head, you know, Bible thumper that some way, well, they probably called us that. But anyhow, I see it as defensive in that it's guarding against the attacks. It's cutting the attacks. These things aren't separate, though. All of these pieces, they, they, you can't have one without the others. Uh, this is a unit that comes complete. It's covering all of it. It's an armor of protection. It's covering us. And we are to stand in this protection, as Paul says. We are to be ensuring that our lives are covered with the spiritual armor. And this is all done with a continual practice of prayer. And we need to be praying not only for ourselves, but also for all the believers in this battle, everyone. And, you know, we could, we could look at this whole thing and see when well, the devil's coming at us, we need this armor. It's a little bit scary it, it, to be uh, somewhat afraid. We could become afraid. The devil is, is going to come after us. But I, I think this should be more of an encouragement. Now, what, uh, Paul didn't write this to bring fear. He wrote this to bring courage. And I think back to the Old Testament where Joshua was about to take the role of leadership over the Israelites. And there would be many struggles against and you know, many enemies that would come against their opposition. But what is it that God said to Joshua? And this is just one uh, example in Joshua 1.9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, this was God promising safe passage into the promised land. I know this is a specific thing that he is promising to, to Joshua. Uh, but we also have no real reason to be afraid because God is also with us. So I think we can use this to be strong and courageous because God is with us. He is with us and gives us the protection against these flaming darts that the evil, that the devil shoots at us. And this doesn't mean also that we don't do anything, but that we prayerfully, by faith, live in Christ by the power of the Spirit living inside each Christian. We call on Him to be our source and our strength. It, it is He who protects while we submit. We, we have our part. Also, Paul doesn't say that these flaming darts always get through. We have the shield of faith. This shield can extinguish those darts. This faith overcomes the world. Uh, 1 John 5, 1, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. And I, I know you remember the the quote that I used at the beginning. If you make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him. You know, I, I strongly argue against that. I, I would say that that is absolutely not true. Think about it. 
God did bleed. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the very God in Son, in the Son, bled when he was beaten and hung on the cross. God did bleed. He gave up himself for sinners and bled and died so that we wouldn't have to. He took our sin and weakness upon himself and gave us his right standing, that righteousness with the Father so that we can be God's children. God did bleed and made the only way of salvation to eternal life through his blood. Satan truly thought he won, but all this did was cause belief in the one true God to grow exponentially. Because God bled, he gave us as Christians eternal protection that cannot be defeated. There is security. And may we daily take, or wait as we wake up. May we wake with the knowledge that being in Christ means that we have the whole armor of God there to protect us. We can confidently say, like the psalmist, like David wrote in Psalm 62, he, is, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. I will stand. He laid himself down so that now we may stand in his truth, his righteousness, his gospel of peace, his faith, his salvation, wielding God's word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to end this morning with a prayer that, as I usually do, I pray. But this prayer is from Warren Wearsby, from that little book I talked about. And I think it will help us focus our minds as we end and as we go throughout the rest of our day today. So let's, let's pray together again. Father, thank you for the provision you have made for victory over Satan. Now by faith, I put on the girdle or belt of truth. May my life today be motivated by truth. Help me to maintain integrity. By faith, I put on the breastplate of righteousness. May my heart love that which is righteous and refuse what is sinful. Thank you for the imputed righteousness of Christ. By faith, I put on the shoes of peace. Help me to stand in Christ's victory today. Help me to be a peacemaker and not a troublemaker. By faith, I take the shield of faith. May I trust you and your word today and not add fuel to any of Satan's darts. Thank you that I can go into this day without fear. And by faith, I put on the helmet of salvation. May I remember the day that Jesus is coming again. He helped me to live in the future tense. Protect my mind from discouragement and despair. By faith, I take the sword of the Spirit. Help me to remember your word and to use it today. Father, by faith, I have put on the armor. May this day be a day of victory. In Jesus' name. sing together this morning. Lead on, O King Eternal, number 332.
Father, you, you do give us everything. You give us our time, our talents, and our treasures. And Father, we pray that you use what we have given back, what we have decided in our hearts to give. And Father, that you use it for your glory exponentially, that we can't even fathom how far it may go. And Father, we thank you again for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. We pray in Jesus' name. Sing together this morning. You guide me, go thou great Jehovah, number three thirty nine. Thank you. 